Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we'll be looking into a very interesting analogical argument known as Russell's Teapot. Interesting. Now, Russell's Teapot, developed by the philosopher Bertrand Russell, is a hypothetical argument the purpose of which is to show that in debates one cannot be reasonably expected to prove a negative. Rather, it should always be on the person making any sort of claim to prove their point. Russell's main focus of the teapot argument was aimed towards religious believers and their unfalsifiable beliefs. Okay, so how does Russell illustrate this? So, imagine if someone comes to you and claims that between the Earth and Mars, there is a China teapot revolving around the sun in an orbit. That's right, there is a teapot floating in space. What would you say? I would ask for proof. I would want proof of this teapot floating in space. And suppose this person then says that the teapot is too small to be detected by telescopes or satellites. There is no way we can see this teapot, but it is definitely there. How would you respond? I would ask why this person has come to this belief. Okay, their response is because it cannot be disproven. There is no empirical way to disprove the existence of the floating teapot. So then, would you believe in this floating teapot? Would you believe that there exists a teapot orbiting the sun? No, I wouldn't. Why? Because no evidence for its existence has been displayed. Ah, but there is no evidence for its non-existence either. You have no proof that this teapot does not exist. That doesn't matter. Their belief is solely relying on not being able to disprove it, that in no way proves it exists. Not being able to disprove something is not evidence of its existence. Exactly, and this is Russell's point. Unfalsifiable claims do not mean that they are true or real, and it gives us no reason to adopt them. Saying to someone, you cannot disprove X, gives us no good reason to actually adopt the belief of X. If someone claims that something exists, it is not enough that their claim cannot be falsified, it is necessary that their claim is verified. Arguing that one's beliefs need to be disproven is also known as the burden of proof fallacy. Yes, I understand. So, Russell's main aim for the argument was towards religious beliefs. If someone came to you and said, there exists an all-powerful being who knows everything, created the whole universe and human life, you would surely ask for proof, some sort of evidence to back up the claim. If they in turn respond by asking you to offer disproof, or rather to prove the negative, to prove that God does not exist, this is the equivalent of them asking you to disprove the existence of the floating teapot. It is nonsense and a fallacious argument. The burden of proof lies on the one who makes the claim. It is the responsibility of the person with the belief to prove their belief. The skeptic cannot be expected to prove the non-existence of their belief and it is fallacious to expect someone to prove a negative. Unless evidence can be displayed, all unfalsifiable beliefs are just as meaningless as a belief in a teapot orbiting the sun. Yes, indeed. However, I would like to challenge Russell's teapot. How? I am not going to argue against the burden of proof fallacy. However, I would like to spin this analogy in favour of the theist. Go ahead. Suppose we are walking in a vast field in the British countryside. After miles and miles of complete empty land, we stumble upon a brick-built house, a really lovely house, double glazed windows, a chimney, a lovely front door, etc, etc. I then turn to you and ask, how do you think this house got here? How would you then respond? Well, I would obviously say that there were once builders here, and they built this house. Okay, if I then said to you, no, I do not believe builders were here. I believe builders were never here. In fact, no conscious being has ever visited this land. This house just appeared out of nothing. All the bricks and the glass and the wood just came into existence out of nothing and arranged itself into this house. What would you then say to that? I would think you were talking nonsense. Right. 
But what if I said to you that you could not in fact disprove my claim? There is no evidence that shows my belief is wrong. There is nothing disproving that the house came into existence out of nothing. Then I would say you were falling into the burden of proof fallacy. Exactly. Because of your understanding of the empirical world, because of your understanding of cause and effect, you claim the burden of proof should be on me to prove that the whole house came into existence out of nothing. So then, when the atheist makes the same claim about the entire universe, is it not fair to then say that they too should share the same burden of proof? If the atheist can claim that the whole universe, all the planets, all the stars, all the matter, all conscious minds came out of nothing, no creator, no designer, then why do they not share this burden of proof? Why does the atheist not have to justify this magical nothingness that somehow spawned an infinite reality? The same way a theist must justify this magical being that created this infinite reality. Hmm, very good point. Before we finish, if you would like the script to this video, then please check out our Philosophy of Religion Part 3 ebook available on Amazon. It contains a collection of our Philosophy of Religion scripts. Also, don't forget to check out our merch store on Teespring. Some great products for sale, perfect for the really enthusiastic philosophers. Links are in the description. But that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And what does everyone else think? Where does the burden of proof lie? The theist or the atheist? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share. And for more philosophical debates, please subscribe to the channel. Take care and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye bye.